YouTube. Welcome to the All Bosses Speedrun Tutorial for Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. Now this tutorial, unlike my AMT tutorial, will be an all-in-one, all-encompassing route for all bosses. This route will include both the advanced strats and the beginner strats all-in-one because holistically the route doesn't change that much. There are only three differences between the beginner and the advanced route, which I will discuss later. So before we hop in, I just wanted to discuss some prerequisites before we get going and get started running so you know all the differences uh, with this game. And speaking of differences, we're talking about version differences. So there are a couple version differences and the version in general does matter if you're going for the fastest run possible. So basically, if you don't want to hear the full explanation, the TLDR is that the NTSC 1.0 GameCube copy of the game running on the Wii console is the fastest version of the game to run on. But let's define that a, a bit further and let's just knock out all of the differences. So PS2. PS2 is just the worst thing to run on. You have the slowest loads. You're losing multiple minutes to loads. You're losing about three to five minutes depending on fishy skip because you cannot do the trick known as fishy skip uh, on PS2. And then also uh, you're losing time because you cannot do pause storage. You're losing about 50 seconds there. So you're losing a ton a ton of time and you can't do an integral part of the run in terms of fishy skip so i highly don't recommend ps2 at all to run on so let's talk about xbox now the xbox version of the game is kind of different from the ps2 version of the game where i will say that if you're running on the advanced route, i don't really recommend it but if you're a beginner or if you just don't want to do the trick known as pause storage Xbox is completely fine because Xbox can do fishy skip and you have equal loads to uh, the GameCube console for the most part. So Xbox is completely uh, worthwhile to do uh, if you're just willing to duck out on 50 seconds to pause storage. So let's talk about what I would recommend and that is uh, any uh, NTSC GameCube game. So specifically I'm talking about the physical copy of the game because basically there is the Wii console and the GameCube console and generally as a rule of thumb uh, Wii is the fastest, GameCube is the second fastest and emulator is the third fastest. And generally I don't think it matters if you play on the Wii console or the GameCube console, you're getting similar time saves across the board and both of those and the emulator is just a bit slower than both of them. So let's talk about one of the elephants in the room, PAL. PAL just is the worst GameCube version of the game. You're going to lose around like 20 to 30 seconds on loads. Generally, I did not time it for this route specifically, but you'll be able to do the trick known as pause storage on PAL because pause storage is just GameCube exclusive to all of GameCube. And generally, I, I would say if you're playing on PAL, I think you should just play on NTSC MU and NTSCMU is my recommendation if you are a beginner because it is just the most easily accessible form of the game to get and acquire and just get your feet wet and start playing on. An emulator only loses 9.54 seconds, so it's about like 9 to 10 seconds on loads to the NTSC Wii. So you're not losing that much time on, on loads if you if you really think about it, especially compared to some of the other versions of the game where you're losing minutes, you know what I mean? So And you can also still do pause storage on emulator. It is just harder and just more complicated to do on emulator, but it is is doable so even if you want to run the advanced route you wouldn't be losing too much time on emulator either but let's talk about if you want to run on the fastest version of the game possible you got to be running on the ntsc console version of the game we or gamecube again doesn't matter i just recommend both now the reason that these are so much faster than emulator is because i hinted to it before but pause storage pause storage is just easier to execute and it's also quicker to execute on console than it is on emulator this is because it's just a more straightforward trick which i'll explain later on but it's just a more straightforward trick and it's just faster so you save time on both pause storage and loads compared to emulator so you're kind of saving like a double whammy there so i just wanted to harken back to something that you uh, heard me mention before which is the 1.0 ntsc copy of the game this is because ntsc has two different copies of the game they have 1.0 and 1.1 1.1 essentially just patched out a couple bugs from the 1.0 version of the game and this is important in this category because we are going to be interacting with something that they patched out in the 1.1 version of the game which is an invisible fishnet bag and essentially 1.1 just loses three seconds on this route to 1.0 because you are not able to do the fishnet jump now i personally don't think it matters 1.1 and 1.0 world records have been achieved on both versions of the game so i say that generally if you have either physical copy of the ntsc version of the game it doesn't matter it just doesn't man i but if you haven't bought a copy of the game or you're looking to buy a copy of the game essentially if you're looking on ebay or whatever the best thing to do is just ask for a picture of the back of the disc this is because you'll see on the back of the disc you can actually see the difference between 1.0 and 1.1 before you buy it. and basically there's 0-0 on the ntsc copy of the game and there's 0-01 for 1.1 again I, it doesn't really matter that much but 1.0 is just a little bit faster for this specific run if you're trying to run on the very fastest version of the game possible
All right, so now that we have the version differences out of the way, let's discuss the difference between the beginner route and the advanced route. There are three. There is Skull for Void Orb, saves about a minute. There is Black Knight Early or BKE, which saves about four and a half minutes. And there is Posture, which saves about 50 seconds. So overall combined, all three of them saves about six and a half minutes. Now, the thing is, is that like the whole exoskeleton on the run is pretty identical across the beginner route and the advanced route. You're generally going into the same levels at the same time, roughly throughout the whole run, which is why I'm going to include it all in one, because certain things you're just doing something different in that specific level. And that is it, right? So that's why I feel comfortable combining it all in one. And basically, I will show the differences between the routes by putting different text boxes on the screen. You'll see beginner, you will see advanced, and you will see both. In the places where there are differences in the runs, I will essentially just include timestamps so that you can skip forward to your respective route and whatever you're running. So there's not that much friction in terms of when you're clicking through the videos and when you're trying to, to learn both of the routes, you will generally be able to find what you want pretty quickly because I will have everything timestamped out of the wazoo. So with all that out of the way, let's just hop in, shall we? Hope you enjoy. Be sure to like and subscribe. So before we uh, hop in, I just wanted to go over some basic controls uh, for this game. I do have beginner and advanced movement guys that I highly recommend you check out before uh, you you really hop into to this run but just so that you all know the controls basically uh, r is to run uh, b is to dash and we're essentially going to be using this b button to dash over uh, long distances um, a is to jump x is to interact with things and yeah that and we're basically going to be always be holding down the r button unless i specifically tell you to let go of the r button so if i don't tell you to let go of the r button this thing is going to be firmly pressed down the whole run timer will start on new game So the, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to just smash A and skip this cutscene and then we're just going to B dash all around in this circle and we're going to collect uh, every single one of these snacks this is because we're trying to get to uh, 25 snacks so we can pay uh, this first uh, snack gate. And so we're just going to get these specific 25 snacks and then we're going to go in and we're going to go into Clamor 1 uh, right away this is because we are getting the map from Holly and so we can get to Shock 1 and get to the Springs. So here uh, we're just going to hold in between the up right notch and the right notch. We're going to kind of uh, skid forward before this cutscene plays just to get some distance. And then we're going to do a trick known as chandelier jump. So chandelier jump essentially uh, looks like this, where we're just going to jump on the chandelier and collect these two boxes and then B dash off into the key. And then we're going to talk to Hollow. Now, uh, chandelier jump itself, uh, how you're going to do that is that essentially uh, I like to line up chandelier jump with the with this corner of the Black Knight poster and basically uh, just run and jump. Uh, this uh, trick can be a bit finicky. Sometimes you can just not get the distance required. Um, if you're a bit too low, you can do what I just did there and basically um, get a, you can basically jump like halfway off this uh, chandelier, but that's chandelier jump. We're not gonna, it's a bit tricky jump. It's a bit troll. Uh, a lot of people miss it, even myself included. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, out of Mr. Machine, just hold down right and we're going to spam X. We're going to release our button. We're going to jump um, after we uh, get the shovel. And then we're going to, and the reason we release our button is just so we can skid forward. Is so we can uh, basically cancel our skid and walk forward into the, uh, into the flower and dig. And then uh, from there, we're just going to make our way into shock one. Now, in, in Shock 1, we're just going to hold a uh, down right and we're just going to walk around Don Knots here and then we're just going to collect those three snacks and we're going to B dash forward. Now, it is important that you are collecting every single snack that I'm collecting because we are running a snack route for uh, this category. And generally, if you are missing a snack, you're going to have to make it up with a slower snack later on in the run. Um, and generally, snacks are time when it comes to this run. So you just want to be sure that you are collecting the same snacks that I'm collecting as you make your way through uh, the game. Shock one, not much going on there. You're basically just following my movement. You're just mirroring my movement uh, for, for the most part here. Um, shock two, we're gonna do our first uh, skip of the game. We're gonna do rubber band skip. And so how this uh, skip works is that normally Shaggy wants us to play a mini game with him, but instead we're just going to uh, and that was kind of bad. Instead of what we're going to do is we're going to skip to this uh, dialogue and we're just going to uh, B dash here. We're going to release the R button and we're going to skid into this corner. We're going to have our aim head aimed in between this box here and this pole here. We're going to have uh, his head aimed into this corner and then we're just going to roll into the straight up notch and then we're going to jump up and get onto the box without his help. 
So let me show that uh, one more time uh, in, in sequence. Again, we're going to dash here. We're going to skid into here, release our button, and then we're going to jump up. Um, and then basically what we're going to do is skip this box, jump, and then jump again and hit that uh, box. Now, this jump is a bit tricky, uh, but I will show you a backup if you uh, cannot get this. So again, into the hole, release the R button, make sure you're... Your head is in between the box and the pole. Roll to the up notch and then jump up here. Skip the dialogue box, jump, and collect this snack box. Now, if you are to miss that snack box, uh, basically what you can do is that you can uh, collect all these snacks and then that will uh, give you five as well. So let's just show it in sequence of what I would do in this level. Here, skid, and then I would uh, jump up here. And then basically just roll down here, collect both of these snacks, and then you're gonna collect both of these bottom snacks if you have collected your snacks perfectly, and this will put you exactly at 50 snacks uh, for the gate. Ideally, you want to be at exactly 50 when you pay the second gate. And and from here, we're gonna start over collecting, but that is your specific snack route for the early game. Um, so after we pay the 50 gate, uh, an important thing to note when we come into this level is that we're gonna remain neutral, and then when we spawn, we're gonna go from right to left. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go from we're going to go right notch and then we're going to roll down into the left and basically turn scooby like that i'll do it a, a couple more times so again a little, a little turn like that I move, i'm starting at neutral and then whenever i see myself spawn i do this little turn and then i go over here i jump on here and then uh, this is an optional thing for the beginners but you can uh, jump off that rope onto that crab and jump over here you don't have to do that as a beginner you can just walk through the tar if you want Okay, and uh, before we get into Pier 3, I forgot that this is one of the differences between the beginner route and the advanced route. So beginners, uh, just skip forward uh, from here uh, and just skip to this timestamp and then you will skip this whole discussion. But for the advanced runners, uh, let's talk about tar strats real quick. So uh, what tar strats is, is uh, in the next level, there's a two frame window where we can jump off uh, the tar. And what we do is that we use a metronome timed at 78 BPM and we jump on the fifth beat. Essentially, uh, whenever the yellow uh, text pops up in the screen, that's when we want to activate the metronome and we're going to jump on the fifth beat. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to hold into the down left notch and we're going to just jump on five. Um, so I will show that uh, one more time here, uh, just like this. Here we go, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna jump on this barrel here. Now, uh, when you get to this barrel, you want to uh, basically be on the right side of this barrel uh, because uh, you'll just have a better angle to get here because if you're too far to the left, it's much harder to hit this pole with the angle. So whenever you land on this barrel, regardless of how you land on it, I recommend to start uh, to the right a bit more and then roll to the left. And then you're basically going to jump across like this. And then you're going to try to get this uh, snack box if you have to get a second try. It's no biggie. And then we're basically going to do one of these. And then we're going to roll over here. Try not to hit these guys. They're kind of in our way here. And then jump through here. And then uh, get the springs. Now you might be wondering, what the heck did you just say to me? And so let's, let's quali qualify that a bit better. So I'm going to try to do it again. Again, we're going to jump here, and then from here, I like to jump out and then back in to this uh, life preserver. Sometimes I don't get it. And then uh, let's talk about here specifically. So right here, uh, what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to be on uh, this green section of this lamp, and then we're going to hold straight up, and then we're going to roll into the upper left notch, or slightly past the upper left notch, kind of in between the upper left and the left notch. But we're going to uh, basically... Um, we're basically gonna gonna roll from straight up and we're gonna kind of roll over to in between the up left notch and the left notch and we're gonna jump and just kind of roll and we're gonna clip past the invisible wall uh, that's blocking us there and so again how we're gonna do that is that we're just going to uh, be on this thing we're gonna roll up and then roll over right and we're gonna clip in just like that you know up and then to the to the up left notch right Whoop. and we're gonna roll like that and then uh also before we go any further i just wanted to show a backup uh if you don't get the uh the the two frame window jump you can do a backup here where essentially you run on this uh lamp post by holding uh basically like 
up left, kind of in between the up left and the left notch, anywhere around there. And as soon as you get this running animation, you can uh, just jump up and around onto this pole, and then you can uh, jump back here to uh, this barrel. And so you can have a backup uh, like this. And then you can do the same thing out and back here, and then try to make it all the way up. Again, up, up to the left, and then you collect both of these snack boxes. And then uh, let's talk about this one. Now this one's a bit tricky. Essentially, you want to have Scooby positioned in the middle of this uh, platform. Around the middle of this platform, it's a bit lenient, uh, but essentially how we're going to want to do this is we're going to want to hold uh, left, and then as we run off, we want to move, we want to jump and move in between the up left notch and the left notch. So we're going from direct left in between the up left and the left notch. It's a very subtle move, right? I'm literally just moving my control stick like that. It's not that big of a move at all, right? As you can see on my controller cam, and then we're basically just jumping and moving to in between the up left and the left notch on this trick. So let me just show that to you. We're going to run here, move, and then jump like that. Uh, ideally, you want to uh, be able to... Uh, ideally, you're going to want to be able to... Uh, jump on this pole and jump off of it. Sometimes you just land right in the tar like that, but... It, that is what it is. And so uh, let's try to show uh, tar strats in full sequence uh, one more time for you guys, and then we will uh, move on. Here we go. Ideally, that's the jump that you want. This uh, will actually be able to show the, the fastest strat for you possible. And then we basically go like this. And then we're going to jump like this. Jump over this guy, again, in between the up left and the left notch. Jump against the springs, and then we're going to death abuse. All right, and then we're going to uh, come back here. So uh, advanced runners, uh, skip again to this timestamp because now I'm going to discuss this for the beginners. All right, beginners. So uh, what we're just going to do is that we're simply just going to walk through uh, this level and we're just going to walk through uh, fear on the pier three. We're just going to you can uh, let go of the R button if you want. It doesn't matter if you hold the R button or not. You cannot run, jump, B dash, anything on this tar. So you're just going to kind of just walk through here and you're just going to try to avoid these crabs by walking around them and collecting these snacks along the way. And then we're going to make our way and we're going to get the double jump and then we're going to uh, make our way and set up a fishy skip. So we're just going to run off that barrel death abuse and then we're going to make our way to uh the back to the beginning of the entrance and so uh the next trick that we're going to do is fishy skip so fishy skip essentially what we're going to do is that we're going to get into the coast levels earlier than intended um and how we're going to do that is that we're going to execute something known as a void warp. And so how void warps work is that essentially whenever scooby clips out of bounds or into the void and he's like falling endlessly or whatever uh, there's fail safe in the game that will warp you to the intended beginning entrance of a level. So what does the intended beginning entrance mean? Essentially, uh, a lot of the levels in this uh, game are labeled one, two, three, four. And so essentially, if you are if you are going from skull one to skull two and you're in skull two, let's say you void warp at the end of skull two when you're about to go into skull three, you will warp back to the entrance of skull two, which is connected to skull one and you'll warp all the way across the level. And since the the level that we're in right now is Pier 3, then the level that we're about to go into is Pier 2. When we Void Warp, we get sent to the entrance of Pier 2, and the intended entrance of Pier 2 is connected to Pier 1, which is where we want to go, right? So uh, essentially, we go back if we Void Warp, it makes us go backwards in levels. And so Void Warps are very useful in levels that go like 4, 3, 2, 1. If we're going backwards through levels, Void Warps are generally very useful in those levels, and this is no different. And so how this Void Warp works specifically is that we're going to go into this next room, and then we're going to hold down right, and we're going to clip into some water, and we're going to clip through. Now, an important thing to note before uh, we hop into this trick and I show it to you is that if you fail this trick, you need to exit the room and re-enter the room. This is because of how water works and essentially um, you just can't do the trick if you die in, in the level. There is a technical reason for this. I'm not going to go into it because it's outside of the scope of this video, but essentially if you fail the trick, just uh, exit the level, just go into pier three again, this level, just exit and re-enter and try the trick again. So uh, let's just go ahead and, and show the trick. So uh, I'm just going to show it to you uh, first and then I'll explain all the implications of this trick. So boop boop. We're just going to warp, we're going to clip through the water just like that, holding down right on the D-pad, and we're going to be over here. Now you might have a question why we're, we want to be over here and, and, and enter coast early in the first place. And so let's just 
discuss uh, uh, this. You can skip forward if you don't care about why we do the things that we're doing in this run. If you don't care, skip to this timestamp. But I want to explain this uh, for you if you if you just want to know. So uh, for for those of you that want to know, essentially here uh, there's a giant wall that we can't get over normally because you need to uh, fight the Black Knight and get his power up, the Galoshes, before you can get to the section of the level before, because the Galoshes essentially allow you to run and jump on Tar. So you might be asking like, why don't we, why don't we just go fight Black Knight now instead of uh, doing all of this? And I'm going to super TLDR this and just say that essentially we fight uh, the bosses out of order in this run. So we're actually fighting Green Ghost first, then Redbeard, then Black Knight, then Mastermind. And the reason that we do this is that basically moving Black Knight from the first boss that we fight to the third boss that we fight saves 11 minutes. I will discuss why it saves 11 minutes throughout the run as, as we get two places. Um, but this is one of the reasons because we skip all of Fishy. Right, and Fishy is basically a set of four levels with a 450 snack gate. So we're saving a ton of time on both snacks and we're also saving a ton of time on just movement, just moving through those levels in, in general. And this essentially allows us to skip uh, all of those levels and also skip the need of the Black Knight uh, invention uh, totally. And so since we don't need his invention, we can afford to put him later on in the game. And basically we use the umbrella from Green Ghost to get to him faster. And we'll discuss that uh, more as we get to it, but I just wanted to give that rough exoskeleton of the run and why we're doing the things that we're doing. With that, let's actually discuss uh, a, a fishy skip. So uh, here, what we're going to do is that we're actually going to use this crab. So when, when we go enter this level, we want to double jump and we want to jump over this crab, right? And this is very important because what we're going to do is that we're going to get uh, about here. We want to get about here on this uh, ledge here where this pole is and basically we want to rub up on this pole and then we want to hold down right when the right hand of this crab crosses this barrel so when the right hand of this crab hits this barrel uh, around like the middle-ish part of the barrel we're going to want to hold down right and, and fall off and we're simply going to clip through the water so let me just show that Oop, let me just show that i'm just going to hold down right and clip through the water i was a little sus but uh, essentially you just want to this is one of the easier tricks that you could do. Basically, uh, uh, you just want to jump over here, get into this corner, wait for his hand, his hand crosses the barrel, you hold down right, and simple as that, you just void warp to the other side. I'll show it uh, one more time uh, for posterity's sake. But again, we're just uh, uh, going through here and we're just gonna make our way through here, boom. And then we're gonna hold down right and go through here. So. And then we're going to make our way into uh, Pier 1. And so Pier 1 essentially allows us to get directly to uh, Coast early, which is uh, great for us because we get to skip all of the fishy levels. And here in Coast, basically what we're going to do is that uh, you're just going to follow the movement that I'm uh, doing uh, right now. We're just going to double jump here, jump off this crab, double jump here. And we're basically just going to tap for tap my movement here. Nothing too much going on here. And then we're just going to uh, make our way over here. Let's basically just try not to, to die and fall on these holes as you make your way through here. And then we're going to stop right here. And this is because right here, uh, basically, uh, after past year is there's a cutscene trigger and essentially what we want to do is we're setting up for another trick is because right now we don't have the helmet and in order to get to coast 2 we need to acquire four keys and these four keys are in boxes that we have to break open with our helmet but the thing is, is that the keys are spawned in already so essentially by death abusing here we not only skip this cutscene but we also move the positioning of the keys so that we can get them and so basically once you get here you're just going to want to b dash and then hold down and then uh, dash off just like this and then this will move the keys and this will also uh, skip the cutscene. And then we're just going to make our way through here. Uh, we're going to go across the back half of Coast 1 to collect some snacks. And then we're going to do the trick known as Fish Clip or Fish Cringe, uh, where we clip into the boxes, uh, essentially. Um, and again, it's imperative that you die there, uh, not only to skip the gut scene, but again, to move the keys. Because if you don't move the position of the keys, it's literally impossible to uh, get the keys. And so, uh, let's uh, discuss that uh, right now. So essentially, we're just gonna, I'm just going to jump over here and then I'm going to be here. The fish shouldn't see me, but essentially uh, how Coast Cringe works is that uh, 
we're going to uh, basically collect four keys and the order that we're going to collect them is one, two, three, four. Now, one, two, and four are very easy to collect. This one, we just hold up left on. This one, we hold up right on. And this one in the back, we just hold direct up and then we flick it to the up left notch and then we clip in and connect that. But the third one is a lot more uh, complicated. And now we're gonna collect that. And that's because we need to use the fish in order to clip inside uh, this box. Now this is one of the hardest things you're going to do uh, for beginners and advanced runners. But essentially, I'm just gonna show the trick to you uh, and then we'll discuss it a bit more. And then I get the key. And then basically we hold up left here, clip in there, dash off here. We're gonna hold uh, up right. And then we're gonna go over yonder and then we're gonna go up left into there. And now we have all the keys, right? Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's a bit much. All right, so how fish cringe works is essentially uh, we're going to bring the fish over here and we're going to, uh, if you're a beginner, we're gonna bonk him like this uh, to the left side of this box. Uh, uh, hitting him over and over refreshes his hit stun. And since we, we're gonna bonk him uh, like this and stop him here, uh, advanced runners, we're just gonna drag him over here and we're gonna double jump, which I'll show in, in a second. But I want to just explain fish cringe more. So I'm gonna bring him back here actually, after he's done and I'm gonna hit him again. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go over here and then we're gonna, do that so let's explain that so we're gonna jump up here and then we're gonna come around here and then we're gonna hold straight back off this like corner of the box and we're gonna walk forward to this plank on the ground this plank all the way across as you can see um we're gonna have scooby's front paw on this we're gonna have scooby's front paw on this plank this is because this is the position that we want for when the fish comes in and hits us and essentially the fish is going to come straight in he's going to hit us and then we're going to hit him so he's going to hit us and then we're going to bonk him and then when we bonk him we're going to jump to the right into this corner and then we're either going to hold one of three directions we're going to hold sh we're going to hold uh straight up on our control stick we're going to hold up into the left or we're going to hold up into the right and essentially the tldr is that if the fish is uh too far forward and by too far forward i mean too far like this way away from the screen we want to hold uh up left and try to click into the box and then essentially if the uh, fish is too far back we want to hold uh, up right and if the fish is uh, dead center we want to hold straight up um important thing to note is that uh sometimes jumping can help you get the key and this is a very finicky and a very uh like it's just a very precise trick in general um so it's going to take a lot of feeling it out um but generally you want to be on this part of the the floorboards and if you are then uh you will generally get the trick more often than not all right so let's uh show that in action this should be a, just a straight upper whenever he comes back over to hit us but uh okay he's gonna be annoying okay he's gonna, he's gonna come over here so i'm just gonna attract him again i'm gonna just check my health okay my health's good i'm gonna walk over here i'm just gonna do this is the advanced way where you just do that and then I'm going to be, he's going to be a bit too far back on this one. So I'm going to hold uh, up right and I'm going to try to clip in here. Sometimes that can happen, but essentially you want to bonk him again. There we go. But yeah, that, that's, that's how, how you get the key. So I just want to show that uh, uh, again. Um, again, uh, beginners just bonk him. Advanced runners, you can just uh, do this double jump manip that I'm doing. And then just fall into this thing. And then you're just going to walk forward to that piece. Jump into the thing and then test it out right there. I was upright because he was a bit too far back. And then we're going to do that. Um, this trick is just ridiculously precise, unfortunately. And this is going to take a lot of feeling out. Um, sometimes you can get lucky with the fish and he'll have another explanation mark. But it's just, unfortunately, a really fast uh, thing to do. Which is why, for beginners, I recommend you to uh, bonk him. Just so you have a bit more time to set up the trick uh, before he comes over. So again... It makes it past the left side and then now you have a bit more time to set up the trick and you know edge yourself to the plank before he comes over and then you can simply jump into the thing and then we should be able to just hold straight up here maybe not up left up right we should be able to get it here um That is the thing that you can do, by the way. So whenever he's at that weird positioning like he was there, sometimes you can kind of aim your head 
uh, up left instead of direct left. You saw me aim myself up left and then I basically held up and then I slid into the box like that. That's a very edge case thing. It doesn't happen that often, uh, but it did there. So I guess maybe it does happen often, but that's just another way that you can do the trick. But again, so the TLDR is that essentially you want to uh, come across here, jump across like this and get to this plank on the ground. And whenever you get on this plank, you should most likely hit the trick. Just again, hop in between straight up, up left and up right, and just kind of fish between all three of those. And generally you should get the key if, you're, if your foot is on this plank and you're in the right positioning. And so uh, beginner runners, just uh, skip forward a bit because I'm going to discuss something for the advanced runners. Uh, advanced runners, if you want to save even more time, if you want to save about a second here, uh, basically what you can do is you can do this. And then you can uh, clip it to the box like this. This is hard as shit. Um, as you, I literally just missed it completely. I was way too far forward there. But basically what you do is you just drag him around and then you skid forward and you want to aim the end of your skid so that you're basically a little past uh, the box. This might work. It's a bit sus. But yeah, um, essentially what you want to do is that whenever you get this fish around, where you want to aim for is basically uh, right here. You want Sc Scooby's like front paws to be basically even with uh, this corner of the box or slightly past it um, all over this uh, situation. And then when the fish hits you, essentially what you want to do is that you want to turn around. I like to turn around up and to the left. I like to roll left like that because if you roll to the right sometimes you can bonk into uh this box whenever he bonks you and essentially you just roll up into the left and then b dash into him and bonk him like that okay and so uh let's just uh, show that uh, one more time i'm not gonna dwell on this too much because this is just dumb hard and i highly recommend you to just do the other way where we just double jump uh past him but again this saves about a second if you can pull it off um, I don't even do this on this uh, route. I only do this strat in the any percent uh, route. But you can get the key like that. But again, uh, just rounding about for both uh, beginner and advanced runners, I just, but rounding out for the advanced runners, I just recommend doing this uh, just without the fish bonk and then just falling down here like this and then doing the trick because it's way more consistent like this. Um, like I personally do this in my all bosses runs and basically in any run that's not, uh, any percent I do this in and you can get the key like that but so uh, for for both people I'm just I don't, I'm just want to show you uh, the cycle that you would be on so let me just get over here and just ignore this so this is the cycle that you're gonna be on uh, you're gonna jump over here we're gonna hold uh, up left into uh, this box and then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna hold uh, up right into this box and then we're going to Walk over this fish and we're going to drag him over here and again beginners uh just bonk him in this position but for everyone else we're just going to jump up like that and then we're going to walk forward and then we're going to clip off of him uh into the box get this key and then we're going to hold straight up and then up left clip into that box and then we're going to make our way through okay and that will be the end of part one uh for uh this guide i hope it wasn't too too long but that is uh, what we're going to be doing for this first part. I don't know how many parts are going to be in the series, but it's going to be split up in multiple parts. And yeah, but yeah, be sure to like and subscribe.